everybody, it's Sue here from slowideas.com. Uh, tonight I made a pair of sarong pants that were zero waste. And you know what? I filmed the entire thing. It took me 90 minutes, including a trip out for dinner. Uh, I didn't film that part. And then when I got to the end, I realized that I'd screwed up the audio settings on my video software and I had no audio for any of it. So I'm going to do a sort of a summary of the project for you and apologize and I will definitely make these again and do an actual sew along. But I have made another pair of sarong pants and this time I used almost the entire piece of fabric so there were no little well there were some little bits and pieces that are left over and they have a use too and I'm really proud of myself so let me tell you about my project and show you what the pattern layout is like and then you can do it yourself and I will make another video again in the future I promise so I'll show you what I started with so this was the fabric. It's two meters of rayon jersey and it's this lovely print. It's 150 centimeters wide. And uh, so if you're buying fabric, this is a fairly standard width for fabric. Um, I am a size 16, 18 in ready to wear clothing, sometimes 14, really depends on the brand. That's the problem with ready to wear. And uh, these are, this is a quite a generous size on me. So this, uh, this size of fabric will work for many bodies. And uh, if you are a little bit larger, you can add some width just by sewing another extension onto the end. Um, if you are smaller, you can just cut it and make it narrower. So let's go. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is this was done for the patternreview.com sustainability sewing contest and uh, the deadline to enter that was 9 p.m. tonight. I decided last night around 12.30 this morning, 12.30 a.m., hey the sarong pants will be perfect for that. I should do that tomorrow after work. Uh, finished work around 6 and got started and I was like I said, trying to film it, but I needed to um, photograph the starting fabric, draw my pattern layout, make the garment, photograph the finished garment, and write a review and post it online by 9 p.m. and also feed my child. And I did it. So, the pattern layout. Here we go. What we have is your big rectangle and down one side you've got strips. If you are like a narrower hip waist person, you can make your uh, strips a little bit wider. Um, the width of the strips for me were determined by how much was left over after making the pants really comfortable and quite generous around the hips for my size. So I took my measuring tape and I went across my body like that. Can you see? Yeah like that to sort of figure out, okay, how far do I want them to go around? And that was um, about 84 centimeters. And I thought, well, eh, no, I'm going to want it bigger than that. Uh, let's go, let's go bigger. So um, a meter, a little less than a meter. Uh, let's go with 96 centimeters. And then, um, so that was the front and the back. And so half of that is the 48 centimeters that you see here on our diagram. I'm just going to figure out how to highlight that. So we've got our 48 centimeters here, our 48 centimeters here. Um, you could make the back wider than the front, but you, on, on the diagram like this, there's no actual difference between the back and the front. So you can decide you're going to make one narrower than the other. But frankly, I think it works better when they're the same. The uh, 30 centimeters in the middle is actually the negative space for my body to go into. And that's actually a fairly easy one. I just kind of take like a measuring stick like this and be like, huh, yeah, it's about a foot from front to back. And I verified that by laying a pair of my jeans out and seeing, you know, how far is it if I lay them flat on the table so the fabric is, um, Kind of neutral 
uh, what's that space and also what's the height. So that's called the crotch depth height. If you're a sewing person, you'll know that term. If you're not a sewing person, you'll giggle. Crotch depth. I said it. I'll say it again. Crotch depth. So that for me was also about 30 centimeters. Um, there we go. That's 30 centimeters. That's 12 inches. And so that one was just a big oval that was 30 centimeters wide and 60 centimeters long. So the top half of the fabric, all of this stuff, is one leg of the pant. So, whoops, that didn't work. Uh, so this is a leg, leg, and this is a leg. And they're just mirrored with each other. So what you do is you end up uh, cutting off, whoops, down there, not good with the straight lines here, people. You cut that, and then you're gonna cut that in half, and then you cut this piece out of each. So what I actually did was I, I folded the top and the bottom, like the left and the right legs together, and then I folded them in a quarter again, and I measured uh, 15 centimeters out and 30 centimeters down, and I used one of my curves to just scoop it out. So the front and the back are pretty much the same. There's not a lot of extra shaping in there because these are really loose pants. Okay, once I had everything cut out, uh, all I had to sew, like the only necessary piece of sewing on this is actually the crotch seam. So you're going to put your left and your right legs together, uh, right sides facing each other, sew around the crotch seam. With a knit fabric, you don't need to do anything to finish your edges because it won't fray anyways. If you're sewing with a woven fabric, uh, you might want to um, serge it or seam allowance it, or you could even do a French seam if you like. I've shown you how to do those. Um, so yeah, and then you attach the waistband by, you get that really long strip, and I'll show you how it works on another pair of these pants, because this is the, not the first time I've made these. So here's the top, there's the center seam, and you lay your waistband fabric with the center of the strip matching the center seam of your pants. You put right side of the strip to the right side of your fabric and you sew across this. Then you come down to the end and you'll have the fabric laid out flat and uh, you fold it over so the right sides are facing each other and then you stitch from the end of the strip down and down until you get to where the strip joins your pants. That's inside out, it's a, like a tube inside out, so you turn it right way around you do that on the other side and then you fold the waistband down on it itself you tuck up a little edge if this is knit fabric it's really easy it'll curl on you and it'll curl under and you just sew straight across there that's how you put the waistband on <coughs> excuse me i've been talking all night and i wasn't even recording myself dang it on this pair of pants, I did not finish the edges, and they're just knit, so it just rolls a little bit. It's no biggie, they're just lounge pants. On this pair of pants, I'm going to try and get a piece here. I did sew the edge, here we go, and I actually put a piece of knit and stable tape down each of the edges, the bottom and each side and uh, I pressed that on. Knit and Stable Tape is sold in a variety of stores. That's the label for it. There you go. It's $12.99 unless you find it on sale. And you, trust me, it's worth every penny. Uh, so yeah, I ironed that on and I folded it and I stitched it under and that finished the edges. Um, I had also cut patch pockets out of the part of the fabric I cut out for the crotch and I just attached those um, in the middle of what has turned out to be the front of the fabric and there's lots of YouTube tutorials on how to do patch pockets honestly I just kind of like figured it out so 
that was the project and as a result I started with two meters of fabric and this is all I have left so this is about three inches by four inches of wadded up fabric and it's not all waste what I also have are the trimmed off selvage pieces that's the edge of the fabric that is used to um, it goes into the machine and it's a little bit stronger it's reinforced so it can pull along on the web and when they're putting the screen printing on and doing the coloring on it this part is a little stronger it rolls up into this lovely little tube like thing that you don't have to stitch at all and it makes fabulous elastic for things like fabric masks so because I am not in need of these tubes and I have other ways of making uh, fabric masks I have I think two sort of three pieces of this and I don't know why I have three pieces I must have cut one in half there should be two pieces each of them two meters long um, there's some that are a little bit skinnier they won't be so good but this is a giveaway so I'm going to give these pieces away I will put them in an envelope and I will mail them to you anywhere in Canada because I have Canadian stamps and I'm not going out right now to get American stamps uh, I will mail these to you for free postage my own cost all you have to do is like this video share this video on your Facebook or other social media um, and put a comment in telling me what sort of projects you want to see me sew next. That's it. So thank you very much for watching everyone. Um, I want to thank my child for being relatively quiet while I was filming this particular video and my cat for not interrupting. Yay. So thanks everyone. Don't forget to subscribe by hitting the, the little Dahlia button wherever it turns out to be and we'll make another video soon. Bye.